Okay, very good, Paul. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, certainly, we're excited about bringing UB football back uh, to our home stadium. It's been a while since we've had an opportunity to play in front of our home stands and our home fans. Um, Saturday at 6 o'clock, you know, you look at what Stony Brook did uh, this past weekend against UTEP. Um, they've got our full attention. Uh, they're well coached, and uh, we certainly look forward to uh, the challenge that they present. Uh, from this past weekend, you know, moving through, uh, having an opportunity to watch uh, the film and uh, being on the sideline, you know, I was encouraged, and a lot of positive things did happen in that football game. But as I told the players, uh, we're never going to accept losing. Um, and there are no excuses. You know, the object and the, and, the, and the goal is to go into every single game and have the outcome uh, that we should expect. And, uh, you know, we need to get back to, uh, um, you know, understanding how important finishing is. And uh, we had opportunities in that game. Uh, we talk about the MO factor, missed opportunities. And, you know, certainly that uh, could have put us in some better positions. But uh, I like the way our kids competed. And, uh, and I really like, uh, you know, when you look at it, you're in the fourth quarter against a Big East team that was picked second uh, to, to finish in their league. And being in that league, I know how good Pitt is. You know, we had over 93 plays in that game. They're 66, so we had plenty of chances with our hands on the ball. Uh, but you look at the total yardage, there were seven yards difference. They had 410. We had 403. Um, you know, we had more first downs than they did. Um, you know, so I see some things, and we grew a lot in the off season in regards to our offensive mentality and how we were able to control uh, the second half. Uh, we just weren't able to uh, stop them. And, uh, you know, we need to put a complete game together in order for us to come out against Stony Brook with a win. Jeff, you started out talking a little bit about Stony Brook. I mean, that, you know, pretty good showing for them. You know, a team that seems like they're, they're very big up front on the offensive line. They like to pound the ball. I mean, it's, some people might think this is a game that, not at all, and you see it. I mean, you know, you look at Sacramento State beating Oregon State. Uh, you see Ball State beating Indiana. Uh, you know, uh, believe me, they have our full attention, and uh, they are a well-coached football team, and and they do have sound fundamental. Uh, they have a sound fundamental scheme and philosophy, and, and Coach Priori does a great job. And you know, so we're going to have to come with our A game. The toughest thing to do in this business to win Division One A football game. So, uh, regardless of who you play, you got to come with your A game uh, because uh, last week UTEP almost uh, lost one. You know, in terms of it took them into overtime. Uh, they still got the win, and a win is a win. But, uh, you know, they certainly are a good football team, and we're going to have to play our very best in order first to have the outcome we expect. What did they do so well to be in a position to beat the UTEP? Well, defensively, they created four turnovers. You know, they had two fumble uh, recoveries, and, uh, and they intercepted the ball. Um, you know, they uh, offensively, they, they had uh, some good control of the ball. Uh, you know, you look at what they did in the running game against UTEP was excellent. And, uh, you know, they had over, uh, you know, over 200 some odd yards in the rushing game. So they have two very good talented backs. Um, one of them can split out. He can be in the backfield. He can be as a wide receiver. Um, you know, and, and on top of that, defensively, um, you know, they shut down their running game. You know, so UTEP uh, threw the ball on them, but uh, certainly uh, the run game was uh, – you know, was very minimal. You know, from that standpoint. So, uh, and they kept they they held uh, they didn't have any real major issues. You know, with turnovers. You know, I think they had one turnover. Uh, so that's always going to create an advantage, uh, as we looked at last week. You know, we had a turnover um, against Pitt, which was a critical one. But uh, you know, we got one right back. You know, and I think those are the things that you got to avoid in order for you so you don't beat yourself. I want to ask uh, you and Chance first of all about the offensive. Second of all, I wanted both of you guys to comment on uh, uh, only, I think we only had one turnover. I know in the off season that was one of the recurring themes you guys were working on and stuff, protect the football a little bit better. Uh, can you guys comment on both those things? Mm -hmm. Well, this gentleman sitting next to me, uh, Chaz, uh, had, had a great, uh, great evening uh, against Pitt, and couldn't be more proud. You know, he had over, you know, we had over 100 yards passing uh, than they did. 
and uh, Chaz did a great job. His completion ratio and his receive and our receivers did a great job. Um, you know, we, I think we finished up over 65 percent completion ratio. Uh, Chaz did a great job managing the offense. And uh, the one thing I will tell you about this young man sitting next to me, uh, he's a tremendous competitor. And um, you know, certainly when that moment happened in the game in the first drive of the second half, um, you know, as he hustled off the field. Um, you know, the first thing he said to everybody, and the defense included, we're going to get this one back. You know, we'll get it back. And that's exactly what he did. And, uh, you know, he was very convincing on silent, very positive, and he was able to do that. So, you know, those are the things that you, you know, that you know that you want out of your quarterback position, and Chaz brings that. He's just a great competitor, very confident in his ability, and uh, he likes what we're doing, and he likes the players that are around him. So uh, let him uh, continue uh, answering that question, Tom. Yeah, what I'm learning a lot about, and not only the game of football, but the game of life, is decision making. And that's what Coach Quinn has impressed upon me, the importance of making good decisions on the field. Especially as uh, the offensive leader, you have to make good decisions. And the mistake that I made on Saturday was um, third and long, throwing the screen. I should have threw the ball on the ground. Um, our offense, I thought, did a great job. I mean, you look at the distribution of the ball. Every receiver that played had a catch. And I think that's vitally important to be able to distribute the ball. And I think that's my job. Um, Bo did a great job. Offensive line did a great job. But we left 100 yards on the field. Um, and we need to improve if we want to beat Stony Brook. So. Chad, it's not always easy to bounce back from uh, what winds up being a pretty crucial momentum mistake like that. Why was it easy for you? Why were you so determined to come and tell those guys what Coach said? You said after that interception. <laughs> well, it's easy. I, I ran off the sideline uh, to meet Coach Quinn and Coach Patterson, and they were positive. And I'm not used to seeing that from where I'm from. So uh, I, it's good to know that you have a coaching staff, mainly a head coach that believes in you. And that's my biggest thing is I, I'm, I'm so happy being here because I'm around people that believe in me and my ability. And uh, that's when I knew, you know what, stay confident, stay positive. We have a great team and a great offense. We'll move the ball and we'll score. So, Coach, you mentioned Stony Brook's impressive running attack, and, and Pittsburgh Ray Graham was a big weapon for them. What are you doing to shore up your defense this week? Well, we got to go back to um, you know watching film and, and putting our kids in position to make those plays, and we're going to continue doing that. You know, I, one of my uh, strongest beliefs is to make sure that we have good um, uh, good sessions where our number one offense is uh, competing against our number one defense. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what you need to do uh, because uh, you know that's going to be able to uh, shore up um, you know our run fits, making sure that our guys in the right place, trying to simulate as much as to what Stony Brook's doing without compromising what we do offensively, but to give our best uh, personnel a good look in terms of the speed and, and uh, you know what we're going to have to be ready for it in order for us to play at that high level. And we have to tackle well. They're running back, so I'll tell you what, you watch UTEP, there's a couple of times, uh, you know, they have players in position and, and their backs just lowered their shoulder. Um, you know, and so it's going to be a great challenge for our defense, and uh, we're going to have to do a great job this week in preparing on both sides of the ball. The, the workload Brandon had on Saturday, is that, can he sustain that all year? Are you, you, you going to give him as many carries as he can handle? <laughs> uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, again, I said this after the game. It does bring a smile to my face. Um, why? Because I know how how much time and effort and work he's put into to be able to do that. And um, you know, that, to have 35 touches in that game, and you know, he even came back Sunday and and did a Bulls in the Community event on South Campus. And what does that say? I mean, I was a little nervous, <laughs> too. I said, well, we need you to be recovering. And uh, I appreciate you representing. He goes, Coach, I feel fine. So I, we know we're training them the right way. I know Coach Duvall does a tremendous job, and we've spent a great deal of time. So you know, he's benefited. Plus, he just brings that different level. I mean, it, it matters to him. It's a deep-rooted passion of his, and that's why I think he's going to be able to handle uh, what we're going to be asking of him each and every single game. Did almost did 35 seem effortless? Were you surprised to find out it was 35, or what was your reaction? I'll, I'll say this. I didn't know we had 93 plays of offense. Uh, I definitely didn't know that through the ball almost 50 times. But, Bo, I always joke with him on the field. I say, you're tired, aren't you? He goes, no, I'm never tired. I'll never say that. I said, I think you are. He's like, no, I'm not tired. And like Coach Quinn said, the effort that he puts in throughout the week, which is vitally important, prepares him for game day on Saturday. So um, if he continues to prepare like he has been, he'll, he'll be fine. 
Jeff, you mentioned after the game that Chaz spoke up and said something to the team in the locker room following the game. What does it mean to have a willing and vocal leader, not only in the quarterback position, but just in general from a member of your team? Well, it's great to have players on the same page, you know, as head football coach. And we talk about everyone being in the boat and all rowing in the same direction. And uh, no one man can do it alone, uh, not even a head coach. And we all know that. And, um, you know, and Chaz understands that, you know, being around Chaz, recruiting Chaz out of high school, uh, being a, you know, a Division II player of the year, um, you know, having the opportunity to watch him and witness him, um, you know, down at Cincinnati and then him to be able, we have a, you know, a relationship and uh, he, he knows what it looks like. He knows what it feels like. He knows what it takes. And, uh, uh, that's why he's just been a great addition. And for him to say that just adds more credibility to what we're trying to accomplish here at Buffalo. Why do you feel the need to do that? Well, you saw the way we played. Um, like I said, we had so many missed opportunities. And there was a gentleman that spoke to us earlier in the week that said the team that makes the least amount of stakes will win the football game. Um, but I truly felt at that point in time that we had the ability to win the MAC championship. And there's a lot of great football teams in the MAC conference. But I know and I believe in my heart that with this coach and with my teammates, if we continue to prepare week in and week out to the best of our ability and we limit our mistakes on the field, especially off the field as well, then we have a chance. Jeff, there's a lot of positive stats from the game Saturday. You're on the road against a Big East team. A lot of good numbers came out of it. It wasn't a win. You go in a different direction now. Maybe you didn't have a lot to lose in that game. There's a lot more to lose this week. How important is it for this program to win this game, a home opener against the, what people perceive as a lower level team? How much pressure is there on you? I, I don't look at it that way. I really don't, and I've, I've said it many times, and in my mind, every game, uh, you know, is important. Every single week is important to prepare the right way, and we ask our kids to perform. And you now, regardless of who you play, you better be playing your A game. As I said, it's probably one of the toughest things to do is to win Division One A football games. Fifty percent of the teams lost this past weekend, and that doesn't sit well. Um, I know our kids put a lot of time and our coaches do too. Um, we're approaching this game like we will every single game. It is the most important game. And uh, we're going to approach it that way as long as I'm the head football coach here. Do you need to see some positive results though? No question. Absolutely. You know, we we need to, uh, you know, as we like to say, you know, we need to taste that sweet taste of victory. Uh, because if you don't, uh, you forget what it feels like. And we need to have that. And I'm going to make sure that I'll continue exerting my will on our players uh, to dig deeper and to perform uh, for four quarters, every single player, every single play, every single day. And you will get the results. I don't concern ourselves with the scoreboard. I tell them all the time, just play one snap at a time and give us everything you got and give yourself and you guys do it for one another. You'll get what you deserve. And I know what's happening. And we are very close. And this week is going to be that week. Jeff, just to, to, just to clarify, with both situations, I mean, he is the guy. There's not, there's not going to be a split like there was in the past. And you're not looking at doing that. He is, he is the guy right now. Well, he's certainly earned that, and uh, you well, saw that. I just want to. That's a yes. Right? <laughs> so, well, he's earned it. That's a yes, 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 Bob. Um, so it's not, in the past, you, you know, you've used multiple backs. That's why I'm, I'm asking sure. most teams do. I mean, and so I just want to clarify that that is, that your plan is that he's going to be out there almost all the time. Well, absolutely, but we also have to be smart, and uh, you know where we think because uh, we have a couple other running backs that are are very solid, and Javon Gill and, and Anthony Taylor. Uh, we just felt that it was, you know, it's a feel, it's a kind of getting a gauge of the game and how things are going, uh, and sometimes you got to mix it up a little bit. You know, maybe you do need to bring a guy like Gill in or a Taylor in uh, to come off the bench and, and to spell uh, Bo. But you know, Bo proved to me that he can handle all those snaps and we're going to continue giving them to them and if we feel it's best for our team to give us the best opportunity to win and somebody else got to step in there for a couple moments to give them a spell we'll do that you know but I'm not gonna you know I, I mean I feel it's very important that every single player uh, prepares the right way and and when those kids get those opportunities as Bo has he's going to continue being our starting tailback okay it's a good segue into the next next thing Lee Skinner's performance um, in that game. And on 
I'm, I'm not sure what the record is for most tackles by a freshman in the first two series of this first college game, but I, I think he was in on six, you know, in, in, in the first two. And, you know, there's a guy ready to step in for John C. I uh, couldn't be more proud of Lee. Um, you know, a very bright young man, and uh, really his take, he's very coachable. I mean, and, and very knowledgeable of the game, and is the only thing that's going to improve his uh, his opportunities and, you know, the way he's going to be able to perform uh, for his duration here is going to be experience. And, you know, for him to go in there, and I think what it did is it, it, he realized, hey, I can play at this level. Hey, I can do the things that they're asking me to do. And, uh, you know, and that just validates uh, what we have always believed in that young man, that he can step in there and give us uh, some play. We didn't think John was going to be out when we had first started camp, but now we look at it. And uh, as I tell the guys, you know, it's that next bull in mentality. And Lee's really stepped up uh, to help our football team. And I look forward to seeing him grow and develop throughout this entire season. Chaz, you mentioned right from the start how excited you were about the receiving core that, that you had to work with. You know, we saw, you know, an incident Saturday where, uh, you know, Alex ends up with the, with the 10 catches, but I kind of get the idea it could be any one of the four of them on any specific day that, that might be that guy. We had six with the catch. I mean, it. we had six guys with the catch. Yeah. So I think that just... But I mean, one guy with... You know, that becomes the, the 10 catch guy, the eight catch guy. But yeah, and, and what I love about our offense is there is uh, a situation where each player can get the ball on each play. So they all run their routes to get the ball. And so that's, you know, a lot of times an offense is a receiver, I'm not getting the ball, I'm going to jog. But they all sprint because they know the ball might come to me. And so that's exciting to know that, hey, we can distribute the ball in a way that each player is involved in every play. So. Chaz, what's your thought process going into a home opener when you're the quarterback? It's the first time people in this town are going to see you play in their stadium. Two things. One, there are no more victories. And I'm going to continue to prepare each and every week um, like you only get one opportunity. And this week is my opportunity. Um, I'm excited. I'm not really worried about it. There's no pressure. I'm playing in front of people that um, I know and love. I get to play for a team that I know and love. So, you know, I'm just I'm excited. I'm anxious. But we need to practice well this week because Stony Brook's a good football team. What, uh, what happened on the, on the interception? Was Bowen able to get a release on that? Were you just kind of up there? Or? I should have thrown the ball on the ground. I mean, the Pitts defensive line, they're like average 6'8", 350. Uh, but in Bo's 5'4", you know, 205. Two but, you know, you got to throw the ball on the ground. You got to make good decisions, especially in the red zone. And for me, that's going to be my emphasis this week is to uh, make good decisions. So. Coach Hutt. Can you give an update on Carlson and Bialante? How, you know, how available were they on Saturday? Could mm -hmm. they have played if the starter got there? Yep. You know, as as I mentioned, um, uh, Jason Carlson is um, is coming along very well, and he's he's ready to. Uh, uh, he was ready to go in, and we we're going to use him more as a backup um, uh, in that particular game. Now, this week is going to be a different uh, situation because we want to see him um, go out there each and every day this week and, and show that he can uh, play at the highest level that he's capable of playing. Violani uh, still, I think, in, in this – this particular week, it's going to be a little bit more in a backup role and uh, give us, um, you know, if we do need him in the game, you know, he'll, he'll be able to play. I just think he may need just maybe another week uh, for that need to really uh, get to the point where he can play at a high level and he feels confident on it. Carlos and Frank's in at guard. Uh, He's center. Yep. You update on uh, Isaac's injury? Now we're gonna today we're gonna find out a little bit more. You know that he's gonna go in and see the doctors. Uh, you know the thing was, uh, you know, uh, he yesterday when I saw him and he couldn't wait to show me how well he was moving and how much range of motion he had. He said, "Coach, listen, this is not gonna keep me out very long. You know, I just need to do, you know, do the right things by finding out a little bit more." Uh, but he feels good, and uh, and hopefully by the end of the week we'll know a little bit more about what his status is, whether he can go in there. And, and actually start uh, for us or uh, be ready for, you know, maybe a backup duty uh, if we need him. But he had a nice, solid game for us Saturday, and it was just, you know, it's tough to lose a kid. But that we've been relatively healthy. So, you know, I feel good that we have other guys that can step in and, and play for us. How did Sherry do when he came in there? Well, it was Okoye Houston. Uh, yeah, Houston was the one that stepped in there. And then Whitney uh, is certainly, you know, in the mix. But uh, Okoye did a fine job. 
you know, we were very pleased with his progress and, you know, and that's why you develop them all year long. That's why I spend a great deal of time telling our kids, you know, every single day we're going to develop here. Every moment's a teaching moment, every moment's a learning moment. So don't let your guard down, seize the opportunity and to make every day count and make every rep count. So, because there's going to be a moment we're going to be asked to go in there and play and play a lot. And that's, uh, that's why he was ready. He had a, he said, Coach, I'm ready. So, you know, and I said, well, go play, son. That's what you're here to do. Okay. Thank you.